All right, there are a few in our parliamentary ranks who have resisted the siren call of marching in lockstep with the lefties. One who is, has resisted it and continues to fight is Liberal Senator from South Australia, Alex Antic. Senator Antic, thanks so much for your time tonight. Why have we got so many surrender monkeys in the parliament? Well, look, Corey, it's, and thanks for having me. It's quite an intro to follow after all of that might help, I've got to say. But look, you're quite right. Um, the truth of the matter here is that um, what's happened in politics is a little bit like what happens in day-to-day -day life for people. And so people can cast their mind back to the last dinner party they were at or the last time they were in the coffee room at work. And there was a particularly loud, obnoxious person who was trumpeting some of the things you've just talked about, you know, this radical gender theory or some climate alarmism. The easiest thing to do, of course, is just for people to sit there and acquiesce because, you know, everyday Aussies don't necessarily want to get into that fight. The truth of the matter is, though, politics has done exactly that. And it's done exactly that for decades on in now because conservative politics is ultimately polite. I think conservatives are people who are basically day-to-day -day people who think that their institutions are going to serve them well. They always have universities, courts, politics itself. Um, but the reality of the matter is that the left are on the march. They are on the march. The long march is well and truly underway. And as I keep saying to people, while you've been sleeping, the left has been creeping and it's now starting to get to a very, very serious and very, very pointy end. Yeah, it's like they've they decided and they, they recognised that the institutions were largely run by conservatives who wanted to see them endure and persevere. They are, as you say, polite and try and recognise that people will determine or rec identify the craziness of some of these things early. But then they've invaded them, they've taken them over and, and it's poisoned the well, if you will, so there's no area of resistance to push back without getting severely damaged yourself. Yeah, I think that's right. And we see it all the time. I mean, I think the most marked point in politics that I see when it comes to this kind of acquiescence is is the deal. And we used to see it all the time under, of course, the Turnbull government, which would be uh, a very bad idea that forms that forms part of policy, which is effectively a trade-off or a negotiation where it should just simply be outright rejected. Now, I know politics is the art of the possible, and I know that's not always the case. But sometimes politics, conservative politics, just has to push back. You know, it's got to push back against some of the stuff you were talking about, this radical gender theory, this critical race theory. And it's everywhere. I mean, just this week in estimates, um, uh, I did some uh, cross-examination of the ABC for pushing basically shows that were promoting critical race theory and, uh, you know, other such topics. Uh, the truth is, it's everywhere. And, and if people out there are frustrated, my message to them is, don't get frustrated. What have you done about it? Because this is across the board in society. It may be that you're frustrated with your local council trying to close off Australia Day. We'll run for council. It might be that you're frustrated with your school. Were you involved in it? Are you on the, on the board of the school? You know, we need conservatives everywhere and we need them inside politics as well, selecting people to go to parliament that share your values. Because the reality is, Corey, we're not going to win back our country with weakness. Well, Alex, you raise that and you talk about people's frustrations. I've got to tell you, I've had a lot of communications about the government's adoption of the left's net zero 2050 target. Uh, the Prime Minister's flown off to Glasgow for a deep fried Mars bar or whatever they eat over there. Um, this is green folly. Why would the government be pursuing it? I understand maybe they were pressured by, you know, this, this rump within the party that was going to cross the floor and, and legislate for it anyway. Is there any truth to that? Well, look, I think the, the point here is that, that, that we've lost this argument a long time ago out to, in terms of the public space. I mean, I think the, the left have been so effective because of the things we just talked about, their control of the media, their control of the schools, their control of the universities, that they've sold people a, a version of climate alarmism that's just not in keeping with reality. And so the, the community pressures that are out there are significant. Now, um, what we've seen, of course, this week is very predictable. We've seen the announcement of 2050, which is essentially a, a slogan, as I've said all week. It's nothing more really than a, than a sort of a, a slogan created by a global bureaucracy. And the minute that happened, what happens? David Attenborough, all sorts of others come out and say, oh, that's not enough. You've got to push harder. Where's your 2030 target? acquiescing to the left's agenda is like chasing the rainbow. You're never going to find it. You're never going to keep up. Yeah. We need a generation of political warlords that push back. Oh, that's music to my ears. But you didn't answer this question. You're saying it's community pressure. I think the pressure is coming from this apparently secret group of moderate Liberal MPs who threatened across the floor. Coincidentally, you know, Felinski, Zimmerman, Sharma, there's some of the names mentioned. 
they all live within inner city uh, and represent inner city Sydney. I mean, what about the people in the rest of the country pushing back and saying this is really going to damage our livelihoods? Well, you know, they need to be vocal about it. I mean, I, I don't know what secret discussions go on. I mean, I, I, I speak to people of all, you know, makes and models in politics, and I speak to a lot of people out in the country, of course, and, and I think the regions are very concerned about some of this stuff. Now, I don't think they've got any reason to, because ultimately, you know, in one sense, we'd rather have this policy adopted by a coalition government. But in my view, um, 2050 is nothing more than a folly. And it should have been rejected. But here we are. Here we are, indeed. And unfortunately, we're out of time. Senator Alex Antic, I love your common sense. So thanks for joining me on Bernardi tonight. Really thanks, appreciate Corey. it. Thanks, Corey. Appreciate it.